Welcome back to module 10 of setting up a journal in OJS 3.3. This is unit 3, review. This section controls the parameters of the submissions review process, including deadlines, forms, peer review parameters and guidelines, and policies regarding competing interests. The review guidelines are not visible on the public website and are used by editors and reviewers working on submissions within the dashboard. That process is discussed in detail in the, in the editorial workflow in OJS 3.3 course. Let's take a look at setting up these features. Let's go to our dashboard using the link at the top right hand corner of our homepage. In the left navigation menu, we'll go to Workflow Settings. Review is the second tab of our workflow settings. First, we'll have to set a default review mode. This could be a double-blind review mode, where both the reviewer and the author are anonymous, a blind review, where the reviewer is anonymous and the author's name is disclosed, or an open review. For this example, we'll use a double-blind review. Then, you can restrict the access that the reviewers have to the submission files. Enabling this box will limit the access to the file until the reviewer has agreed to review it. In the next section, you can enable the inclusion of a secure link that will allow the reviewer to access the review without having to log in. We'll have to set the review deadlines. You can choose to set a time limit defining how many weeks a reviewer has to either accept or decline a request to review a submission, and how many weeks they have to complete their review of that submission. If you choose to add limited timeframes, be sure to include them in the review guidelines so that your reviewers are aware of these policies and deadlines. After that, you'll have the ability to set automated email reminders. We'll talk about the content of these emails in a coming unit. These reminders require some configuration by your site administrator. But here we can set how many days after the due date the system will send our reviewers a reminder. When we're happy with the changes, we can click on Save and Continue. The next tab on the Reviewer section is Reviewer Guidance. The Reviewer Guidelines section is a space in which you can define what is expected of your reviewers and provide them with review criteria to help them assess the submission and any guidelines or policies that would help reviewers complete their work such as deadlines to accept the review or the deadlines to submit it. This is a rich text editor and you can complete it as best suits your journal. The second rich text editor of the page is an area where you can define your journal's competing interest disclosure policy. Here you can customize this section as best serves your journal. At the end of the form, you can enable the option to present a link on how to ensure all files are anonymized to help the reviewers complete this step. When we're satisfied with the changes, we can save. The last part of the review settings page is the review forms. Here, you will find the list of all the review forms created on your journal. You can also create a new one using the create review form button. This will open a pop-up window where you can set the title and description of your form. Then click on Save. To add items to your form, click on the expansion arrow beside the title and click on Edit. In the pop-up wizard, the data that we just entered in the Create window will be located in the first tab, Review Form. We can also click on the second tab, Form Items. In this section, we'll create items to be included in the form by clicking on Create New Item. 
The rich text editor gives you lots of space and flexibility in crafting each of your form items. After you define the item and its description, you have the option to make this item's completion a required action. You can also choose to inform the submission's author through an automated mail if this form is going to be used to review their submission. Using the drop-down menu, select the item type that facilitates the appropriate response to your checklist item. If you want your reviewer to select a response from a list of preset options, such as to select whether the submission is ready for publishing, needs to revise or should be rejected, you can set these options in the response options. To add a response option, click Add Item. When you have completed the form, click Save. If you need to edit the items or you want to remove them, you can click on the expansion arrow to expose the Edit and Delete buttons. Repeat this process for every item you wish to add to the form. The third tab in the wizard is the preview form. Clicking on it will show what your reviewer form will look like to those using it. To close this window, we can go to the review form tab and click on save. Where your form is ready to be used, be sure to check the active button and confirm if you want to activate this review form. Once you have assigned this form to a review, you will no longer be able to edit or deactivate it. Clicking on the expansion arrow also gives us the options to make a copy of the review form, preview it, or delete it. This concludes the setup of the review section on the workflow settings. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next unit.